what's up, Marvelites? Welcome to an all-new episode of the MCU Exchange Podcast. This is episode 15. Woo! I am your host for this episode. My name is Aaron. Alongside me is Joe. Hello. And Charles. What's up? What's up? And a shout out to our listeners over at Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and Breaker. And also a special shout out to the Office fans who saw our tweet. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> You can check out our tweet over at Twitter and you follow us at, at MCU Exchange. You can also f- like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash the MC Exchange. And let's dig in to the latest about the Marvel Cinematic Universe on the rundown. First up, it has been long rumored. It has been, he is the internet's top choice. And now it seems it's coming into fusion. Because there's a rumor going around that John Krasinski already had a meeting, a virtual meeting, with Marvel Studios for a multitude of projects. Uh, Guys, what do you think? Is this a sign that he is going to be in the upcoming Fantastic Four movie? Or is just, you know, just a casual conversation, eh? Are, are you up for this? Charles, what do you think of this rumor? Um, I've never kept my sort of disdain for John Grzynski playing Red Richards a secret. I think... <laughs> he's such a just to me no offense to everyone who who thinks this but i think he's such a basic gen, generic choice for for reed richards like when you see him oh, i think he's going to Richards. that's never been like the case for me i do think he's going to be at some point be included in the mcu be it behind the camera or in front of the camera because he's proven that he is a very capable director and mm. i'm more interested honestly directing than um than uh, starring in something i know a couple of years back he was actually one of the final choices for captain america but obviously that didn't work out so you know I, I, i've always thought that oh maybe he gets to play u.s agent but you know he's not playing u.s agent either so you know I mean, there's a lot of characters that's free for him to play um i, I kind of like the idea that he could be cyclops i like that theory or rather that 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 fan casting that oh, he's yeah, playing X-Men. Because yeah, because that, that looks pretty sick, and you know, John Krasinski now is a very good-looking, buff, badass dude as he portrays in his show Jack Ryan. And for me, Reed Richards was never that guy. Reed Richards is, is a total dork. He's not this hot hunk. He's he's a guy that you can you can actually beat up the same way we could beat up Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner if he doesn't turn into Hulk. So. You know, we, I don't want a badass Reed Richards, but I do want a badass Cyclops. So maybe Krasinski can play Cyclops in my book. Joe, how about you? What are your thoughts about this meeting? I, I think it's, you know, it's a it's a meeting for probably film that won't be in question until 2023, 2024. So there's still a lot of time to see where, where he's going to be, if he's in a director's chair or he's going to act. I, I mean, I like him as an actor. I think it was fantastic in, in his directorial uh, film with Quiet Place. Um, the thing that I'm interested in, I mean, the fan casting for him is Mr. Fantastic kind of is a double dose of, he looked like a version of, of they, that fat fan edit just made him look really, really good in the suit with a beard. Um, they want the idea of his, his wife, uh, Emily Blunt playing, um, uh, invisible girl. And that's kind of the thing where I think just a lot of people kind of hook their claws into that concept and want it to be a reality. Uh, I'm absolutely with Charles. I actually always thought he would be a great choice to play uh, Cyclops. Um, I think he would be a really good choice for that character. I mean, I could even see them try to bring him into a way that we wouldn't expect. I mean, there's so many characters that are with the X-Men returning and Fantastic Four. Um, Maybe they'll just be evil and say, oh, he's Ben Grimes. (laughs) So that's just complete twist at 180. But I, I'm really yeah. excited to see what they do because he has proven himself a lot in a lot of projects. It's really funny to think that he could have been in some alternate universe he is right now, Captain America, or was. And I, I think there's a lot they can do with this character. I even think he would be a good choice for, like, Hyperion because he plays the straight man pretty well. Um, so, like, a, a, the MCU's version of, of uh, Superman and, and try to play on that fact that he was... I'm still a big hope. Uh, I still have a big hope that we get a Secret Wars film where all the actors that were almost cast can play the characters they were supposed to be casted as. And I would totally love to see Chris Evans fight a different version of Captain America that is John Krasinski. Next news up is uh, we have a news here coming. A confirmation that Sam Raimi has confirmed that he will direct 
Doctor Strange in an interview with, with an outlet. Um, thank God it's confirmed. Uh, Charles, your thoughts about finally having the confirmation of Sam Raimi as the director God. of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I fucking love Sam Raimi. I just watched um, Spider-Man mm-hmm. 1 after, I don't know, maybe a decade. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Um, I'm surprised actually how stylistic that movie is. Some of it kind of feels dated visually because we're so inundated with, uh, you know, the big CGI, MCU, special effects kind of uh, superhero film. But seeing a stake, how a lot of mm-hmm. it is very practical, makes me very excited that he is indeed on board for... For the Doctor Strange sequel, my only wish was that he was on board from day one and not, he, I'm not he's not coming in when you know the script's getting rewritten and Derrickson was finally left after years of being attached to it. I kind of wish he was there from day one, but I can't complain because Sam Raimi is a fucking amazing director and I can't wait to see what he has in store for the next adventure of Stephen Strange. Joe, what what are your take? Uh, what are your take? Uh, what is your take about? A Sam Raimi and you know, elevating the Doctor Strange character in a sequel. I think it the whole thing is kind of ironic at this point. It's ironic that years ago the first connected universe reference in a Marvel film was Spider-Man's reference of Doctor Strange. To have the director of Spider-Man then direct the Doctor Strange film now, that's incredibly fascinating to me. But I also find this current situation we're in is also a little ironic that I think uh, original reports said that all Derrickson wanted was a bit more time to rework the script because it was getting like too many elements were being combined into it from other properties. And now, ironically, there is the time to technically do it because everything's been delayed. Um, I, I still think to some degree that he's involved with everything because he has been very vocal about how happy he is that Raimi's taking over as well. And I think Raimi... What I think a lot of people tend to forget is like he's famous for directing Spider-Man, but he's also extremely famous for directing the Evil Dead series. So he has a lot of horror background and it makes me really excited because Doctor Strange was supposed to be their first foray into horror. So there's a lot they can do, a lot of creative shots. Like if we get a lot of shots on the level of the Spider-Man 2 Doc Ock operation table sequence, Mm -hmm. I'm completely in for it. And I I also really hope that this means we get Bruce Campbell in the MCU. <laughs> a possible cameo. He he did lobby for a cameo in, based on the, based on his tweet. Based on the yeah, I saw that. Bruce Campbell's one of the my favorite cult actors ever. And you know, he could fucking appear as anyone. I, I know a lot of people wanted him to play Mysterio a couple of years mm-hmm. back. You know, he's fucking Bruce Campbell. He, he's such a campy actor. Um yeah, I'm all for fucking Bruce showing up in the strange sequel. What about you, Aaron? And now that it is confirmed, it's confirmed that he will have a lot of time. He has a lot of time to, you know, craft the story. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it was earlier rumored that the supposed production start for Doctor Strange 2 is on May, right? Now, now, he has a lot of time. He at least has five months to form up his own vision before shooting is expected to begin. Um, I mean, not not five months. At, at least a year. Sorry, that was the earlier, when that was the earlier mm-hmm. timeline when he was announced as their play as the uh, director back in Jan January, and now he has a lot of time. And now, given that, I think he will elevate the Doctor Strange character, and also Scott Derrickson will still be there as an executive producer, mm-hmm. so they can share notes. <laughs> and um, I think for me, I've been saying around over Twitter that. Doctor Strange 2 is might might be might be the most important film in phase 4 because just because of them introducing the concept of the multiverse right mm. it lays out the groundwork for the next build up of the MCU for the next end game like event and they tried that with time travel and end game and i think the next big event would be about would revolve around the multiverse and with Sam Raimi uh, taking over as the director of Doctor Strange, he can now set the groundwork for the multiverse moving forward for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, uh, next up, we have a new teaser and a premiere date, finally, for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it was, it was also confirmed that it will involve an Agent Carter character 
in the first few episodes, which is Daniel Sosa, which mm -hmm. is which was of course the love interest of Agent Carter back in season one and season <laughs> two of the original series. Joe, I know you're a fan of Agents of Shield, and um, got me. <laughs> what, are, what are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts about you know um, about this crossover about this being the final season, what do you expect to see? So the thing for me is, and I think, I, I really hope that they they accomplish this, is that uh, Agent Carter ended after two seasons with a huge cliffhanger at the end. And I'm really hoping, even if it's just a subplot, that that cliffhanger is kind of answered in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s last season because I feel like there's the shows have always been kind of connected there was a teaser that was kind of like a backdrop pilot where they brought back Agent Carter in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season 2 and I I think the show has gone quite a long while I still as much as I love the show I think it should have ended uh, at the moment when Coulson uh, died, and because bringing him back is is it's comic booky, but it's a little convoluted at this point that they're trying to drag the story out. But at yeah. the same time, they they kind of give you the feeling that they're trying to really end it on a high note, and I think they're doing it similar to Endgame. The going into time travel uh, is an interesting approach, and I, I'm still excited for the season. Uh, I think I think they filmed it like forever ago. So this is kind of astonishing that it took this long to come out. Um, yeah. So I'm curious how much effects work they put into it. And I I, I don't think we're going to get a movie. This isn't Community Six Seasons and a movie <laughs> thing. Be cool. But I do, th I do think that there's a lot of potential just to see these characters the last time. And I personally still believe that um, Marvel Studios should make a S.H.I.E.L.D.-centered show that kind of is like a connective tissue to answer unanswered questions or stuff like that. Um, to also give some backdrop to other stories. Uh, and I thought Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to be that show. They went a completely different direction. I'm still happy they did. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. And I'm going to certainly watch it from day one. Any expectations? Any scenes that you want to see for the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Oh, man. So... I've like like my other opinions. I've never kept my sort of dislike for Agents <laughs> of Shield a secret. I'm very vocal about it on social media. I like making fun of the show a lot. Um, I watched the last season, which was uh, is this season seven, the last one, or season five? Season season six. Oh yeah, whatever that whatever whatever that season was with uh the thing with Izel, that was probably yeah. my my least favorite yeah. season for for the show, which is ironic because. It's, it's 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 the only season where it's actually short, and I I like short shows. I, I hate the twenty two <laughs> episode format. Um, so you yeah. think I would like something more that was shorter, but the whole thing just didn't excite me. I kind of like the ending where Coulson just lives in Tahiti with May. That scene yeah. was perfect. I didn't like that they 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 found a way to fucking bring back Coulson here. I mean, hug. give me a fucking break. How many times have you got? To bring back a character that died, I mean, let fucking let go, let go of the dude if you wanna really do a bold choice. But you know, they they wanna bring him back, and as we see in the trailer, he's back and he's like, he's kind of like his old self. So for me, there's not much to be excited with in the show. I am happy that the show is ending on its own terms. It's not, it wasn't just yeah. abruptly canceled. I mean, they, they they got to prepare and how they end ended it. So perhaps to them, and I also find it poetic that the last show to send off Marvel TV is the first show to introduce Marvel TV. So I am happy in that aspect, but I'm probably not going to check out this <laughs> season. I might just read the stuff, but I don't know if I, can, if I can invest a couple of hours watching a show I'm not excited by. But, but that's why <laughs> But I think that's such a great point. Isn't it ironic that the show that everyone wanted to kill off since season one pretty yeah. much summarized the entire run of all Marvel TV shows that were supposedly connected to the MCU? Well, for me now, for me, my, my thoughts... Well, I, actually, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the first TV series that I watched. I was not fond of TV series back then. It's a little trivia oh, about cool. me. Yeah, that, that was mm. the first... Because I'm a big fan of Agent Coulson. I love the character. From Iron Man to Iron Man 2, Thor to the Avengers. And it was sucks see, seeing him die in the hands of Loki. And knowing that he was set to return, I was curious. I was, I was intrigued. That's why 
uh, I was able to watch the first almost every season. I watched it, and uh, the show. I love the show actually, and um, I'm a huge fan. Same as Joe. Nice Joe. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm excited and the prospect of uh, of a time travel and Age of Shield. Like they're doing the same thing, like what Le- Legends of Tomorrow did in DC in the D- in the CW Arrowverse. I think that's what they're trying to do. And um, they're pretty exciting pieces. They're pretty exciting prospects of where to go. I I think it's now. I think I believe that they are now set in the multiverse. I mean, it. Ha- I think I don't know. Can, Joe can confirm about that because they live in a world where the snap didn't happen, right? Yeah, that that was the strangest thing. So for me, what I think kind of happened is that the original ending at season five is kind of the ending within the can- canonical MCU, and then they somehow went for a multiverse version where the snap was delayed or didn't happen because it skips a year. It's a really, it was really odd. And it kind of cemented that the Marvel TV shows are all in their own little pocket universe in a, in a way. I, I kind of wish that Kevin Feige just kind of gave a statement on it or gave it a name if it's ridiculous. Uh, I'd respect them speaking of uh, uh, Doctor Strange too. Like, I could see Doctor Strange making some slight references to those TV shows. It's in time when they get the rights back for the Netflix shows that kind of point out, oh, that's a different universe. You can have a quick cameo and kind of put the pot on the lid. But then at the same time, Endgame has the cameo from Agent Carter's version of Jarvis. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, so it's all confusing now. And uh, maybe they purposefully make that made that confusion so that fans can watch it. I don't know. That's a cheap. No. Do it. But the thing is, we have now a Loki show where it involves time travel. We have a Doctor Strange movie where it involves the multiverse. Now we have an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. movie that deals with time travel and possibly the multiverse. So there's that, and there's that <laughs> thing that they're, they're, they're saying that it's all connected. We might see, I don't know, we might see in the next few years that maybe it's all connected. <laughs> Loosely. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not. <laughs> I love how Disney exactly. Plus has the Marvel Cinematic Universe section and it's only the movies. <laughs> oh so that's the only official statement we have on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but there's the thing about the poster. Have you seen the poster, guys? There's the, there's the Captain America shield there, the old Captain America shield. Yeah. What if, what if uh, Chris Evans can be? I guess it's a cool touch that they're going to go back to the early days of shield where maybe... We see maybe the blueprints for Project Rebirth that eventually mm-hmm. leads to Captain America. That that aspect excites me. I just kind of hate the whole thing with Izel and you know, Coulson yeah, coming right. back and Aliens. The, 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 I I kind of want I want to go back to the the core of the show, which is Shield. And I want to I want yeah. them to explore more some of the Shield that we never saw. And obviously, we're getting Souza. I hope we get um. Hilly out, but like, I, as far as I know, she's bound to show up. So it's going to be fun seeing these faces one last time. I'll say the perfect way they could end this show, because that would have been the original ending from season five where they're in Tahiti. But I believe if they want to end it, because Colson now is an LMD, it's a really confusing thing. But I want the ending of Endgame, where pretty much Captain America goes back in time that he sees Coulson as he's trying to go see Carter. So it's kind of like the two people from the future, like, hey, what's up? (laughs) And it also fits because he was a huge Captain America fan. So that would be a thematic, beautiful ending for these characters and kind of also confirmed that it is a side dimension or a different timeline that because of the events of Endgame. Pretty exciting. And one thing's for sure, the final season will be the celebration of the past seasons as well. We might we might see a time ju- a time travel to an episode of the past season. You know, oh. or maybe a, yeah, right, we right. could possibly see that as a sort of a callback to past seasons of Agents of Shield. Moving on, we have another rumor here coming from uh, a YouTuber, John Campea. It is he shared that Joss Whedon have had conversations with Marvel Studios about. I, about the Fantastic Four version, uh, that Fantastic Four of the MCU. Charles, do you think that this is legit? I mean, I believe that's what John Campia heard. Whether it's actually a thing happening behind the scenes is 
remains to be seen. But I mean, Joss Whedon is sort of friends with everyone, even though he he sort of he's spoken negatively about his experience with on Age of Ultron. But you know, everyone's friends over there. Um, I'm of the opinion that I want to see someone else new. I I, I like what Whedon did with both films. Like I like his decision to do the farm and everything else. It's it's a pretty you know, I think it's a pretty good um uh result. So, you know, I don't hate his work, but I want to see someone new do it, do the first family. I'm sure once this film is officially greenlit, a lot of directors are going to want to, you know, get this property mm-hmm. right. So, it makes sense that, you know, Joss Whedon might have had a meeting with Kevin Feige saying, "Oh, I hear you guys are Making a fantastic four movie, maybe keep me in mind. It could be something like that. So, no, who knows what the fuck's happening behind the scenes? I I like Josh Josh Whedon's films. I think he did some quite a quite a good job with Avengers, and I I think Avengers uh, Age of Ultron gets a lot of unnecessary hate to a certain degree. Um, but I don't I don't think he's a a good choice for Fantastic Four. I, I just think, like, I agree with Charles. I think someone new should take over. I think the biggest fan casting of a director is Brad Bird because he just kind of nailed the concept back in the day with uh, The Incredibles. For me, the thing is, or my my theory is, is that the direction of Fantastic Four will determine what kind of director I think think would work for the film. Because on one side, if they go for a straight, oh, the Fantastic Four have been around for the entire time, it'll be a little difficult to kind of segue into it. Because let's be honest, the films that focus on this family didn't quite work. It was either over-the-top comedic or trying too hard to be edgy with fan four stick. Uh, I personally, there was, I think a long time ago, I was reading some fan theories where they said that the Fantastic Four were actually existed back in the 80s and they were sent to space and they kind of, through time travel, through the effects of them changing or sent into the present day. And I think that's a cool concept you can play around with. Also kind of explain why they've been absent for as long as they have been. But yeah. I personally don't have like a a, 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 a director where I say he's perfect for this because I'm really unsure how they could introduce the Fantastic Four. That's, I think, the hardest part for me right now. Yeah, I think the, the MCU will have a lot of time and have a lot of risk about making the next Fantastic Four movie. And, and um, it's up to Kevin Feige and the rest of the Marvel Studios mm-hmm. on who on decision of who will be the director. I believe that... Uh, I think yes, they did. They did. They did reach out to him, or I, it started way around, because of the experience of Joss when it comes to team up movies like the Avengers, Age of Ultron, Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think he will direct, but I think they reach out, like uh, maybe seek an advice and hit maybe how do we do this? Like, um, right, uh, uh, who do you think uh, can take over? And also, there's this rumor back or back in the. Back, several months ago about uh, the pitch of Peyton Reed about the Fantastic yeah. Four of them being set in the 60s and um, maybe oh, he 60s. is that being considered as well. Yeah, he's maybe maybe he's being considered as well. Um, and, and I love that the idea of you, Joe, about Brad Bird potentially um, mm. taking over the reins of handling a Fantastic Four movie because the, both Incredibles movie are just likable and that's the thing about the fantastic four movie movie uh, when it comes to the mcu it should be likable it should be that redemption movie that every fantastic four fans and even cashful fans want mm-hmm. they, they want that like um and they trust marvel studios so much that uh i'm sure people will flock to theaters whoever the director is when it comes to fantastic four and they want to see that quality they want to see that better product that Marvel Studios has been has done in the past. Um, next up, we have another news here, just a fresh rumor coming around literally an hour ago <laughs> from <laughs> MCU Cosmic. It's it said uh, he Jeremy Conrad says that the Captain Marvel 2 movie will set up the status quo of the next Avengers film. He named it as the new Avengers. I don't know if that's his term but just pretty telling um charles do you think this rumor is just a rumor or do you think this is there's more to this rumor 
Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, I think it's just a rumor because it's. I don't like the way it was reported personally, but I think when you look at all the stuff that you've been hearing about Captain Marvel, and you know, a couple of weeks back we heard that they were kind, they were trying to do like a secret invasion, like a series. And you know, with the scrolls in Spider Man, um, uh, Far From Home, and all the other stuff that they're kind of setting up, wouldn't be surprised if the next event is Secret Invasion. It makes sense. Um, if Captain Marvel 2 is indeed setting the next event, then I, I think Secret Invasion is a very good bet. As opposed to having setting up the actual team, I'm not quite sure because I'm not sure I want to see a lot of people in Carol's movie. I want to see. Carol, I mm. want to see more. I just want to see the same cast. I want to see, you know, I want to see Carol finally come into her own in modern day. I don't know. I don't. She doesn't need any of her Avenger friends to, you know, help sell the movie. I think she she should be, you know, front and center in her own story. Uh, I agree. I, I personally, if if this rumor is true, that kind of confirms that this is in 2025. Uh, from a story standpoint, I, I still think there's so much more to tell because they teased like for a sequel that something's going to happen with Ronan. Um, and I think it's kind of a waste not to go back to that time. At the same time, I think if they're going towards Secret Invasion, I, I think that's a good idea because it is a very large scale storyline where they can play around with a lot of the actors. Um, but I, I think that... I don't, I don't know, because the thing is, if we have a new Avengers aspect within Captain Marvel, does that limit her story to being an Earth-based story? Uh, and yeah. I think that would be kind of a waste, because we don't know when Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 comes out. That is, for a film that's been in production as long as it has been, ignore, considering all these situations that have surrounded it, this would be next to Thor, only really space-based character for some time now, um, with the exception of the Eternals being introduced. So the question, and I think Captain Marvel works better in a space story because on Earth she's just overpowered. And there's not a lot of threats that can face her in a way that would make it, I think, as thrilling as if she's in space fighting who knows what kind of monsters or an entire army. And it, it's it's tough. Uh, I, I think it's a, it, it's a rumor, and I think there's a reason why it's a, a rumor. Um, that could be ju- It could also just be a short sequence of Oh, hey guys, uh, this is the new Avengers. I'm going to fly to space now. Gone. <laughs> that yeah. Just as well as possible. Well, you know, after the mixed reactions to the first movie, it's, you know, it's a given that there are a lot of mixed reactions about the first Captain Marvel movie. You know, I think it would be great for the studio to focus on making the Captain Marvel sequel as good as it can be to win back the fans, to, you know, yeah. um, to have it like a, a redemption movie of sorts for the Captain Marvel sequel. Pretty much much like what happened to Captain America the Winter Soldier. Fans love that movie and it changed the way they see Captain America as a character. And I would love to see the Captain Marvel sequel before anything else, before setting up the Avengers, before setting up the future of the MCU. I would like to see the Captain Marvel sequel to be a great movie as it is in, in, in its own right. It, it, I, th- I agree with you. I think it needs it needs to find an identity among yeah. all the MCU films. And I think that was his biggest challenge because being a 90s film with space elements, it, they tried a little, but it wasn't there. And I mm-hmm. think that the sequel really needs to give what makes a Captain Marvel film. Similar to what, Cap- what you said with Winter Soldier, that defined he is a political and thriller-based character with uh, spy themes. And I hope... That the sequel would answer the lo- ever longing question, where is Goose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring back Goose. Hashtag. Yeah, yeah Goose. So th- those are the uh, big news about the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the past week news and rumors, just to be clear. And now we're moving on to the exchange. So we're going to talk about the worst costumes in the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it's a long shot, guys. There are, there are so many costumes, there are so many characters to choose from. Who wants to start, Joe? Or um, I can start. Or, I, no. okay. I can start with my nomination because it's not really a costume, but it's more of a they're trying to bring realism into a, a goofy costume, and it's Quicksilver. Uh, for Quicksilver. me, his 
Under Armour shirt that kind of sort of has the pattern. Uh, I, I know what they were going for uh, with the film, and they were trying to introduce him as characters, but because he gets killed off in the film, unlike Wanda, he doesn't actually get a costume. So it feels like a half measure just to get the character out there and something to be recognizable. I still think from a design standpoint, they tried something unique that worked. It was definitely Quicksilver on the first glance, but yeah, they could have they could have done a much more with that character. Do you have an honor- honorable mention? Uh, my honorable mention uh, goes to, I had a hard time because I think a lot of the characters do, I think that's one thing MCU was always really good at is making the costumes look good. Marvel TV, however, <laughs> uh, it has to, it, it, if we include that, I, I have to go with the um, nonchalant Iron Fist. We have a mask oh. and that's about it. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep, it's hard to yep. argue against that. We can we can include Mar- Marvel TV, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Charles, your t- choices. Funny you should mention Marvel TV because my hatest costume, ironically, in the entire MCU, is that fucking shitty Daredevil mask. That is. Oh that is, yeah. That is probably one of the fucking worst. I mean, it's not fucking. Garbage, but as far as you know, fucking superhero cows go, this looks pretty fucking terrible because I know that from a design perspective, they had to cover the nose of Charlie Cox. And obviously, in the show, it's sort of explained so his nose doesn't get punched. But I know on a visual level, they had to cover Charlie Cox's nose because it was so recognizable. Like anyone who knew mm. Charlie Cox in that world, anyone who knew Matt Murdock could easily tell. Matt, is that you? Because of the nose and the everything from the nose down below. The 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 forehead is kinda huge and everything. It's yeah. it, it's not as as it's not like the the mask I was hoping for. Um yeah. and you know, I also kinda hate that it's so dark. It's kinda like maroon and less red. Yeah. Ironically, people hate that the, the, the twin D's on the chest are missing, but I think that's perfectly fine. It's not like every superhero you needs to have a logo plastered. On a suit, I mean, not everyone is a propaganda machine like Captain America, so, you know, fucking <laughs> Daredevil doesn't need his symbol. But yeah, the costume is so militaristic. Daredevil is, first and foremost, a ninja, and his costume looks like he's fucking taking on a bunch of terrorists in a battlefield, which, again, for story purposes, you know, it's, it's to protect him, but it's not the costume I want. I mean, it's not like the Ben Affleck awesome was any better because that looked like a fucking yeah. BDSM suit because it was <laughs> fucking leather. It's not anything better, but you know, I'm hoping that when that um, when the, when Kevin Feige gets to do the MCU version of the costume, they mm-hmm. nail it. Also, ironically, the costume was actually designed by Ryan Maynarding, who's the main um, the main designer for oh, all yeah. the film. Oh, uh, really? so, I think. On a visual level, Maynard Ding sort of did everything correct, but when it came to actually translating the suit into a physical piece, that's when sort of things fall apart. I mean, their devil their devil's costume is absolutely the worst when it when you mm. actually see it for the first in the final episode of the first season. I know that that costume came a couple of days before they filmed it, so they didn't have much time to actually do a bit of adjustments to the suit. So, you know, the fight scenes look fucking terrible. Charlie Cox looks fucking terrible in that costume. So even the fight scene where Wilson Fisk and the level of fighting in that alley, it looks it's absolutely the worst fight in all the shows because you could tell that they didn't know how to film a show around the costume that wasn't like a black suit. So, you know, I'm willing mm. to get by that, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping they fucking nail the mask next time around. And I mean, this fucking show is show is fucking nose. Nobody gives a fuck. I mean, I, I find you know, the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I, I find the irony where like, oh, they put it on his nose because it's recognizable, and at the same time, so he doesn't break his nose, but they cover his ears. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Like, if you're going for practicality for his, what he can do. And there was a, a sketch before the show started production that was really cool where they had like a design that kind of showcases how they could utilize a mask where he the ears can still hear, but the mask he wears would kind of damper his entire uh, ability. So it's like 
you can't have both, you know? And they had a huge right. build up to that final scene. Fi- yeah. I mean, final fight scene in the season one of Daredevil. And then, you know, the huge build up to that reveal as well on the, of the costume. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was fucking terrible. But, I um, mean, the, the, the season one suit compared to the season two suit. I mean, this, it's, it's a light year is better, but, you know, even the cowl is still kind of fucking weird. They, they need to find a better way how to do that. I mean, obviously, like Captain America, the cowl is a helmet. Um, again, it makes sense on a you 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 utilitarian level, but I mean, this, the, there has to be a better way to stay more faithful to the costume without making it too fucking ugly. Got it. My pick. I have two entries, by the way, guys. <laughs> I have an honorable honorable mention. Uh, first up is from Marvel TV too. Uh, it's <laughs> all the costumes in the Inhumans TV series. Oh, oh god! Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. my god. I hate it. Like I was expecting, you know, at least a comic book accurate costume, but they didn't deliver on that front. And it's uh, it's not that bad, but it just it just didn't work. You know that it something's off. Work. Yeah. And something's off um, for the entire show, not just the costume. <laughs> um, the execution, you know, that in Black Bolt, it's not. It's weird seeing Black Bolt not having that iconic mask from the comics. Yeah, I mean, fucking, fucking, fucking Trident looks like looks like fucking Shrek. When when the character is supposed to look like a fucking like Abe Sapien and Hellboy, that's how that's how the character yeah. looks like, and they made like fucking Shrek, Asian Shrek. I, I think in general that you see that Marvel TV was under Ike Perlmutter's care for the whole money pinching thing. Because he saw that they ran out of budget and they knew exactly where the budget went least and it was costumes. The advantage Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, their costumes were literally clothes. So that was the easiest thing to re- replicate. But any character that had a costume design or a superhero identity, uh, I'll just say Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s their Secret Warriors episode, they just... They were suits that kind of sort of look like the what they should, but at the same time don't. And Inhumans was the epiphany of it all. You know, the thing is um, about Medusa, actually, in that series. It's like I saw a tweet back then. Like it, it simply states that Medusa is like wearing a wig from a cheap yeah. store. Yeah. <laughs> so, it looks like he's like, he has a wig. Yeah, that's not a win for Inhumans. And uh, I hope yeah. whenever Marvel does it again, I mean Marvel Studios, Studios does it right the next time, I hope that they deliver on the costume front because that's important. I have another entry now for the movie side. Um, it's it's a personal entry for me because uh, it's a cringy. I, I saw it as a cringy one. Whiplash in Iron Man 2. <laughs> the, I, which I mean, one? I, uh, uh, the 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 first costume in the racetracks. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, oh. when, when he literally when I was watching that movie, when he was uh, whipping the <laughs> his arc rack and the, the energy whips. Yeah, I I, I can't I, mm-hmm. I I imagine himself like a girl doing a jump rope <laughs> style <laughs> of play. <laughs> yeah, honestly, honestly, that's my first thought. Honestly, I, that's my first thought uh, when I watched it back in 20, 2010. I, I, I was actually having nightmares of seeing Mikey Rourke w- uh, with his energy whips, pretty much like a girl with his jump, jump rope routine. That for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that was a uh, joke on the Avengers Academy game, too. <laughs> really? Well, I didn't yeah, know that. I think. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, and he's shirtless, um, and it's uh, I, I think it's pretty rush. I I know it's uh, it's part of the plot and stuff, but you know, it's cringy uh, having him there shirtless with an improvised arc reactor, and then you know, when when he when he was about to attack Iron Man, he just whips his energy whips like that. Like I I'm not sure with you, but you know, in a jump rope manner. <laughs> I don't know. Did, didn't yeah, it yeah, also burn away his shirt? Yeah, it, it burned away his shirt while while he was recharging it before. Yeah, but he but he never got burnt. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the, the that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, also, uh, like, like Aaron said, nobody wants to see fucking Mickey Rourke fucking topless. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of like um, the, the, the whiplash design of the costume, so I kind of hate how they gave him a fucking giant armor at the end. Um, I'm sure they, they have a couple of designs that they that are actually far better than the actual, the actual product, but, you know, talking about one of, one of my... My favorite costumes. I mean, we, we gotta fucking talk about Mysterio. That's one of the oh, yeah. biggest. Yeah. Of the just, just the fact that they nailed the costume is a uh, is an achievement on its own. Like, how else could you have achieved that costume beyond what they did? I I also love the fact that the elements from his original costume play into his character. That it's over the top in a degree. It's a copycat from Iron Man because he wants to be Avengers. But then the eyes from the original costume are the uh, on his uh, G, uh, CGI suit that he wears. Mm-hmm. I, I love yeah, that touch. Yeah. So that's a very nice touch. And also, I mean, probably my fucking favorite costume in the entire MCU is, the, is Captain America's suit. Like, I, mm-hmm. never, never in a million years could I have imagined a Captain America suit actually working. I, I mean, obviously, they, they ditch the wings and the ears, but what they yeah. what they replaced it with was very sensible and you know the uh, another shitty costume is the Joss Whedon Captain America suit from the first film that's probably the worst oh, yeah. in all films the fucking the one the one that looks like pajamas and uh, I'll it be looks honest, I think it works really it, it, it looks terrible but it it works if you think about the fact that it was made and designed by Coulson who collected the original stage play propaganda Captain America. That was like his introduction to the character. So he probably based the costume on that. So in universe, it kind of makes sense to me. (laughs) The thing about the the Avengers costume, if you look at the early concept art, um, it actually works on paper. When you see the the Ryan Maynarding concept art of the the Avengers costume, it, it, it works on paper. It's just like the material looks so bad and I don't know why they decided to cover his neck and cover his ears. Yeah. The, the shape of the helmet doesn't seem like the shape of Chris Evans' head. So it's kind of like he has a larger forehead than he usually has. It's, again, it's, it's the same problem with the Daredevil suit. Having uh, the, wrong for, the, the wrong cranium shape changes everything into something you gotta nail correctly. And unfortunately, the helmet of Captain America in the first movie was pretty fucking terrible. Charles, from all I, I the think, Captain America yeah. suits, what, what is your favorite? From all the Captain oh, my favorite uh, is the Age of Ultron one. Oh, people right. pe- people mm. like the, uh, like the uh, Civil War one and uh, obviously the Endgame on the scales. It's kind of hard to go against that. But I, the thing I'm missing from the... I'm looking at the costume now. The thing I'm missing from the end game suit is that he's missing the white pads on his um bicep in the suit. When the Age of Ultron has that bicep, the white bicep, I'm gonna send it True, to you yeah. the, yeah. in our, in our uh, Slack chat. But you know that 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 white bicep patch does goes a long way in keeping it very faithful to the to the costume design from the comics. But you know it's 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 one thing. I mean, the end game suit is pretty fucking amazing too, with the scales and whatnot. So it's it's pretty up there. I love the Winter Soldier suit, the from the stealth mission. Uh, oh one. yeah, it's, uh, it gives a pretty a pretty spy feel. <laughs> right, right. Also, uh, one last shitty costume in the MCU. I gotta go with Marvel TV again. Um, okay. what, the, what the fuck was his name? The monster. Lash. Oh yeah, Lash. Ash, yeah, Lash. Yeah. That was pretty fucking bad. I mean, again, I get that it's budget restrictions, but when you look at Lash in the comics and Lash in the show, it's you know, it's kinda like, oh damn, that's that's what they went for. I can't believe they settled on that. But in the uh, on, on the other end of the spectrum on Marvel TV you got fucking Ghost Rider who they fucking nailed. So, you know, there's there's good and bad from each um division. 
for worst costume, so Lash was also one I was thinking about because it looks like they turned uh, a pretty big buff character into a strange hedgehog. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I have to say, like, from all the costumes, like, the one thing I was always... Cur- I, the one costume I think they really did a great job with was Yellow Jacket to me. Because it was a character that oh. kind of had the, probably the goofiest costume I've ever seen in comics. And they translated it into this really cool, sleek, Iron Man-esque design that fit the universe and also kind of made it stick out a bit more. Because that was the costume I thought was going to just fail. <laughs> I was like, they can't translate that effectively. Until that tra- trailer popped with the costume, I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, also a good costume is Vision. I mean, yeah. I think yeah. as ridiculous, the Vision costume is as ridiculous as the Yellow Jacket costume. I mean, with the fucking collar and everything, and the, the fucking knock Vision out of the park. I love the fact there's a reason he has a cape. He just copied Thor. <laughs> and the gauntlets too, yeah. That wraps it up for the worst costumes in the MCU. Uh, if you have other entries, guys, please do let us know over at our Twitter. That's twitter.com slash Exchange. You can also comment it when we post the episode on our Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Exchange. Please do like our page. Also, once again, a huge shout out to our listeners over at Spotify at Anchor, Google Podcasts, Breaker, and at YouTube if you want to have that MCU feel, that MCU reminiscing days. <laughs> you can watch uh, some of our videos at MCU Exchange. We have a whole a lot, a lot of recaps, a lot, a lot of um, videos that compiles the highlights or the pivotal moments about the MCU that was edited, of course, by Charles. Oop. And um, hope you guys are staying safe. This has been another great episode of the MC Exchange Podcast. This has been me. My name is, my name is Aaron. And you, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Aaron Chino. That's A-E-R-O-N-C-H-I-N-O. Joe? You can find me at, at that abel, T-H-A-T-A-B-E-R-L. You can also follow Charles. You can follow me on Twitter at CFS Julian Web. And on that note, Thank you, everyone, for listening to the MC Exchange Podcast. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.